So I've been asked a number of times to show people how to do uh, complicated patterns that uh, can be used in a program such as Illustrator uh, as a vector graphic. And one of the tools that I use to do that outside of actually creating them in Illustrator is a program called Vectoraster. And what I like to do in Vectoraster is um, when you open it up, um, the default page actually comes in with a gradient already up here in the corner. And I'm using Vectoraster 6.0. And usually when I do my graphics, I use uh, grayscale, but you can actually use photographs um, from you know JPEGs or, or, or anything like that. But I usually grab uh, the, uh, gradients that I've actually created in Illustrator. Um, so let me show you how I go about doing that. But this is the default pattern here. Um, and before I go into actually what's inside of Vector Raster, let's go ahead and I'm going to save off this pattern here that I created. Just as a simple gradient, it, uh, radial gradient. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, save for web. And I usually save this as a PNG because um, that seems to work best with, with this program here, uh, Vector Raster. And we'll save that to our desktop. We'll turn off Illustrator. And what you can do is, you see it up here on the, on the top right, you can take that image, drag it right over top of, your, of this primary source image. You can actually you know, file, open, and grab it from wherever you want, but uh, you can easily just drag it in there. And what's interesting is, what happens is the areas that are actually black, or the darkest areas, create the largest size uh, shape. And wherever you have white, along the outer edge here, it goes to a smaller shape. So I'm just going to increase this so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So you can see this center part here, um, you know, a lot larger scale shape, and it's the darkest. So right here you have some options of changing the actual shapes that you want to use. So you can go from a circle to a box to a polygon, a rounded polygon. You have a lot of options here where you can change how many edges that the polygon has. Um, so uh, a lot of cool cool features there. Let's just keep it on the uh, let's keep it on the circle for now. But over here in this uh, point size here you can change the scale of the smallest uh, shapes that you like and the largest shapes that you like. You can enter that into directly into this field here or you can just move the slider up and down to get the desired effect you want. Here this remove small points. If they get too small you can remove those and you can actually tell it what shapes you want, um, what size you actually want to remove. So if that helps you out or not. Um, one other thing, up here you can actually create custom shapes as well. So if you have a specific shape that you're using for a logo or, or anything, you can import that in here and use that as a uh, custom shape. Um, down here under pattern type and spacing, this you can, right now it's on a straight grid, you can change this to alternating grid, so they kind of nest in there a little tighter and this feature is really cool, the spacing. So the space that you want to add in between each of these circles. So it doesn't change the scale of the circle, it's just moving them away from each other uh, further and further So as you move this slider over. So if you want a, you know, a larger circle, you can go back up here and start changing the scale of your circle, the minimum, maximum size here. So pretty cool. Um, down under pattern transformation, there's some interesting pattern distortions that come with this. You can add a twist to this, uh, a wave, a bulge, uh, things like that. So it depends on what you what you want. And each of these has their own um, additional uh, tweaks that you can make to it. So you can change the size of this um, wave here, kind of where that wave happens, how many times. So like some herringbone patterns perhaps up and downs so a lot of cool a lot of cool features um, so this is for just a simple basic shape so let's go I've already created um, another gradient here that has you know 
I'll show you an illustrator that has a little bit of a curve to it and what I did was I just used the mesh uh, create mesh tool and created my custom shapes I really want to define where those large shapes are going to happen down this spine and then they kind of get smaller as you go out to the edge so let's go ahead and, and grab that and I'm just gonna override this and put that in here now you can see um, it's maintained the scale that I've already had in here so the minimum and maximum numbers didn't change so that's another thing you got to keep in mind so if you're using vector raster at the same time so what I mean by that is like a, a couple different images that you're doing all at the same time this kind of locks into um, that mode so whatever image you drag in here will have all of the the effects that you've already created in here so again you know I'm just gonna change the shapes let's do some polygons and kind of play with you know play with those but you can see this curve that I wanted here I really wanted to focus on that and and they, you know we achieve that right there so it's it gives you a lot of control over over where you want your your intensity and the larger shapes to happen so then back in Illustrator I had another complicated shape here um, you know whatever this is uh, but I just wanted to want to have like the outer edge be my largest shape and then kind of fade inward in here so you know whatever you're designing there we will import this in and again it's going to use the same parameters that I've already set up um, and you can kind of see it's doing some pretty cool some pretty cool shapes and it's 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 going to exactly the position that I want so those outer outer shapes are getting the largest scale so it's, it's a really cool really cool program in order to be able to do complicated shapes now here's a really cool thing so let's bring this you know okay we did it in here now how do we actually use this in Illustrator so we're gonna go up here and we're gonna save this um, this image out so we'll export and you want to remember in here to do it as an EPS so that you can open this as a vector graphic in Illustrator so we'll just do untitled EPS We'll save this to the desktop we showed up right here so we'll turn off Vecto raster and we'll open up our illustrator and I'm going to add this into illustrator so it open up, opens up a new window so I'm just going to copy this I'm going to paste it into my page here and you can see the scale is pretty much the same as what I originally started with I'm just going to move this over here and show you a couple things that we can do in illustrator using this so what it actually does is it creates a, a bounding box and I'll add a color to this so you can see what's actually happening so we'll just go and add a, a blue color and we'll So now when you, when you select this, let's ungroup everything and just grab our blue image here. And for some reason this has made a lot of a lot of different shapes so what we're going to do at the beginning is let's let's ungroup this first and then we can add this color we'll send that image to the back you'll be able to see now we have all these shapes 
that are on top of this bounding box. So if you don't want the bounding box there, you can eliminate it. We'll just leave it in here so you can see. I'm going to lock that layer with Command 2. And then you can select all of your hexes and go ahead and um, modify that color if you want. So this is a way, let's just group this. Um, and you can kind of see if we slide that over. So you have your your base color here, but then you also have just your hexagonal shapes that you can go in and manipulate and, and do whatever you want to it. You can add a stroke to it. Um, I'm you know the the sky's the limit here. So a lot of cool stuff you can do. And but the point of this exercise was to show you how to take a, a complicated gradient uh, that you have total control in in Illustrator here and be able to create a pattern to kind of fit inside of it another shape or, or really get the desired effect that you're looking for. So I hope that helps everybody out. Um, so check out some of the other videos uh, that we have on how to draw. Thanks.